Hi, I'm Darren Peppard. Welcome to the Leaning into Leadership podcast, the podcast dedicated to today's hardworking leader. Join me every Sunday for leadership insight, inspiration, and a little pep talk to keep you rolling down your road to awesome. Hello, my friends. Welcome into episode 108 of the Leaning into Leadership podcast, where my guest on the show today is Katie Kinder. Now, if you are not aware of Katie Kinder, folks, buckle up because you are going to love this episode. So Katie's the author of two books, Untold Teaching Truths and Hallway Leadership. She's a professional learning facilitator. She's been an educator since 2006. Katie brings a message of hope and fun and some real strategies to educators all over the nation. You see, Katie believes that life is fun and learning should absolutely be fun. She is a teacher of the year, a top five district finalist, speaker, author, professional development leader, a mom, and an absolute fierce educational advocate, along with being a wife. Katie has learned a trick or two in the classroom, and so she is all about sharing that and inspiring other educators. Katie and I sat down and had a really awesome conversation recently where we talked about the first time she and I met in person, which is a really fun story, along with just some tips and ideas that we both have for how we can best go about inspiring and retaining those new teachers, the baby teachers, as Katie calls them. We want to keep them in our profession, and folks, I know you do too. And so this is the episode for you. You are going to catch all of that and so much more in this incredible conversation right on the other side of this. Hey leaders, let me tell you a story. It's the story of my first year as a high school principal. I will tell you, I was exhausted, I was overwhelmed, and I lived my life breathing through a snorkel because my head was so far underwater and I didn't think there was a way out. I mean, I was a mess. The 40 feet that it was to move from my assistant principal office down to the principal's office might as well have been a 400 mile trek. I was just absolutely putting in crazy hours. I was trying to do it all, like trying to answer everybody's question, thinking I always had to be the smartest one in the room and I had to solve everybody's problems. We're talking severe superman syndrome here, folks. Every day was fire after fire and all I accomplished was putting out fires. Forget about leading, I was simply trying to survive. Now, after working with a leadership coach, I really was able to get things figured out, get my head from being a firefighter to actually being a leader. But it took work, and I discovered some things that really mattered. And that's why I've created Walk in Your Purpose, five mindsets to level up your leadership, a free ebook that you can have today at no cost. Just go to walkinyourpurpose.roadtoawesome.net backslash ebook to download your free copy. Again, that's walkinyourpurpose.roadtoawesome.net backslash ebook. It's time for you to walk in your purpose, to find joy in your job, and to be the leader you always knew that you could be. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. Explore more podcasts at www.teachbetterpodcastnetwork.com. Now let's get on to the episode. You know, every now and again, we meet somebody that when we very first meet them, like immediately you just know, wow, this is somebody who I am totally totally going to have a good time with. I'm going to really enjoy, you know, having a a friendship and a connection with this person. And oh my gosh, I have to work hard to keep up with this person's energy. And that (laughs) was pretty much, that was pretty much my, my thinking when I first met my guest on the show today, Katie Kinder. Um, 
Man, we got to tell that story. But but before we do, just really quick, Katie, welcome into Leaning Into Leadership. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Darren Pepper, and I like to say your whole name. I know people call you like Pep and they call you like Coach Pepper and, and maybe Mr. Pepper. And, but I like, I like the whole name, Darren Pepper. I like it. Well, that's that's very kind of you, Katie Kinder. I really appreciate that. And folks, uh, you know, you're just listening to the audio, but uh, if you know Katie Kinder, if you follow Katie Kinder, you are probably well aware that she is sporting her teal glasses. She is rocking the Katie Kinder look. I uh, we'll am probably talk about that to you yeah, at some yeah. point. Yes, yes, absolutely, I like absolutely. It. I think I think we'll be together in North Carolina in March. Um, I oh think, yeah. Ooh. Are we together in March twice? Are you? I think we're together in New York also in March. So, yeah, we you got to hook me up with some some teal glasses. That's going to be great. Yeah, I want to like hundred yeah, percent customize them just yeah. for you. I want them to say pet. There you go. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Right on. We're gonna do it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, Bedazzled. All right. So. Um, we are already going off the rails here on this episode, and I love it. I think that's going to be awesome. As I said, folks, yeah, so so like I said, folks, when I first met Katie Kinder, we actually met in person for the first time this past summer in Las Vegas at a conference, and man, we uh, we found out we just we have a lot in common. We have a lot of the same passions, a lot of the same love for our educators, and that's what we're really going to talk about today, but just really quick, Katie, for any of my listeners who don't happen to know who the teal glassed young lady is on the screen with me right now. Tell them a little bit about who you are, what you do, that kind of stuff. I mean, the fact that you just called me young, I think we're best friends because I'm 42, but thank you. <laughs> Maybe I have youthful energy. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Katie. Whatever Kinder. it takes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to get those bedazzled glasses. Yes, I have been an educator since 2006. And I love it. I love to create experiences for my students. And then I became an instructional coach and I got a model classroom where I could spend the day with my baby teachers. And I did. I asked the superintendent, I'm like, give me the toughest kids so these teachers know that I can teach. And they took me super seriously. <laughs> so if you got into a fight in gym, you're in Miss Kinder's class. And so then my baby teachers could come in and watch me teach. And then I could go with them and teach their classes and i really loved the model like i think that's what instructional coaching should be and you know it's hard to take advice from somebody who isn't also in the arena getting their booties kicked so it's like i'm like i'm here with you and so then i i've been speaking and loving the baby teachers all over the nation and going to places like Las Vegas and meeting Darren Peppard. And yeah, it's fun. Absolutely. So I, I want to I chase something that you said. Um, I okay. told you that's what I was going to do. And so here we I go. Love it. Um, I've actually, I've, I've heard you on a few different podcasts. And um, oh, one that I listened to fairly recent, you, you said something almost exactly like, like what you said just a little bit ago about like, if you got to fight in gym class, you're in Miss Kinder's class. So that's what I want to chase. I, I want to talk about that a little bit more because, folks, look, here's the bottom line. This, this, is, this is why Katie and I are having the conversation today. Um, we are all about helping our teachers. We're all about helping our leaders. We're all, we're all about ensuring that they can do everything they can so that our students can be successful. So here you go. Let's, let's pick up a tip. This is, a, you know, all those baby teachers who would come and watch you teach those kids who got in fight in gym. What what were you doing? What were you doing to have success with those students? And what, what can teachers who are struggling with kids just like that right now, what can they do? Sure. sure. Well, and first, let me just say, I think that we always need to be a study of the game. The kids are evolving. We have to evolve with them. Like, no longer should we have classrooms that look like they did 100 years ago. Like, we have to, I mean, even pre-pandemic, our kids have changed a lot. And... So I will say that as well. Like I will always be a study of teaching and learning and kids' brains. And because, you know, something that worked with one kid might not work with another kid. We know that, right? But, I mean, I was in there I'm procedurally. Like we have, you know, this is how we sharpen a pencil. And this is how we ask a question. And here are our group procedures. And here are the things that you need to know. And... <clears throat> And then experience lessons. Do you hear my dog? Do you hear my dog barking? Oh, yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, that's <laughs> really perfect. sorry, everyone. <laughs> it's great. Um, so experience lessons, like what kind of experiences are we creating for our kids that are going to last a lifetime? And I really believe that like engaging in relevant lessons Like our kids have got to buy in. And if they don't see what is in front of them as something that pertains to their life, they're not going to do it. They don't want to do it. And some people can be like, well, you know, I teach the standard and they like, well, it's going to be rough. And I believe in keeping up with the kids and making sure that you are providing lessons in which they will engage the best thing I hear at the end of class is like, oh my, it's time to go already. Like, oh my goodness. And I love that. But I think a big thing that you just said, um, I, I don't want to gloss over it at all. Um, in, in order to get to all of all of that stuff, it's about it's about procedures. And you <laughs> talked about like procedurally, hey, this is how we sharpen a pencil. But so often when you know, when new teachers come into the classroom they are caught up in, I've got to teach this standard or I've got to make sure my kids get to X because the other three teachers that teach freshman biology are so far ahead of me or whatever. But typically those teachers who maybe are quote far farther ahead of you, one, they've done it a whole lot more. Mm. Um, But, but two, they have really good procedures already in place in the classroom. So like, to me, classroom management is just such a huge, huge piece. I want to say that it's overlooked. It's probably not fair to say that it's overlooked, but maybe maybe sometimes that's something that we just assume, oh, they'll pick it up as they go, or we can coach with little tips here and there. I, I want you to go a little further with the procedural stuff because yeah. I just think that is so essential. Sure. I mean, I on day one... I am going to address something that I I see in class I that I is not allowed. I'm going to address it. I'm going to be very direct with my kids. Like, hey, we are not, and I do it with a smile on my face, very love and logic. But, hey, we don't talk across the room in my class. But if you have a question, I'm happy to help you. And I just, like, smile at them. <laughs> and so from day one, like, hey, we might be working in groups on Friday, but uh, right now we're doing individual work. And there's, like, I train them, like, I train them with instrumental music. Like, hey, if the instrumental music is on, it's individual. So let me know if you have questions. Like, I mean, I just am very direct with them. And I have a whole classroom management workshop that I put on for new teachers and for teachers who just need a refresher. And I have a list of things. I mean, this is what I do first when a kid does this. This is what I do second. This is what I do third. And a lot of times they don't know, like, and our, our new teachers, our baby teachers, they are, they're not confident enough. A lot of them to walk in and be like, I'm drowning. I need help. I mean, some of them are, but a lot of them in my experience are scared to do that. And one of the things I love about the mentorship piece is that I'm not evaluating them. I'm not writing on their evaluation. I'm not like, they can come to my safe space and I will love them. I've got teachers all over the nation who come into Instagram DMs and are like, this happened today. What would you do? And I'm like, this is what I would do. So I do think, and sometimes like after a long break or after, you know, something scary has happened, like we revisit those procedures. This is how we behave, you know, and our, our classrooms need to be brain based. Like, are we, are we keeping up with brain research and how these prefrontal cortex, like how are they developed? developing they aren't developed i think they say men now are in their 30s like what uh so these our kids they they just need and our kids don't want an a classroom that's out of control they might think they do they might think that's scary though they want to know they're not in charge and there's so many of our kids that go home and they're in charge and it's almost nice for them to come into a classroom that is structured we're going to have some fun but I'm not your friend. I love you. I love you too much for you to do that. But I'm in charge. And so it's almost like takes a weight off your shoulders a little bit. No, I love that. And I, I just I just think that's so, so important. You know, we're at a point in time right now where we lose a really high percentage of new teachers in their first three years. 
Um, yeah. At the other end of the spectrum, we're losing a lot of leaders um, probably earlier than normal. You know, people that are, you know, tapping out at 52, 53, 54 instead of 62, 63 or 64. Um, just for whatever reason, maybe, maybe it's, you know, they're transitioning into something else like, like what I've done, or it's, you know, they're just, they're just, they're just done. They're just worn yeah. out. They're exhausted. And, um, certainly it's, it's a big challenge that we face on, on both ends of the spectrum and, and your focus, your work is really all about helping those who are just coming into the profession. So, sure. so let's talk a little bit more about that. I know that, uh, you know, you're out on the road, you're speaking at conferences, you're speaking in schools, you're providing professional development. Um, what, what do you see right now? What are some trends that school leaders, district leaders need to be aware of with just, I guess, challenges or concerns or struggles that those baby teachers are having? Sure. I mean, again, I think that a lot of them, they close their door and they, they want to pretend they're on an island and they're not. They're not. And I think that our admin, have they need to check in with them more. And I'm thinking teachers in their first five years need a mentor teacher. In their first five years. I feel like after five years, you're kind of like, okay, I've done it. I kind of get it. And like we can't just assume they're doing okay just because they're not talking to us. So being in classrooms, being a hallway leader, being the thermostat of the school, like knowing what's happening with our teachers is huge. I mean, like I also like to talk to vet teachers who kind of lost their spark. Like I know they didn't get into it to sit on their desk and bark at kids. Like I know that. So what happened and how, what can we do for them to get that spark back and become innovative again and, and want to not just hold their breath until retirement, you know, like I want to know and let's, let's provide this for, for teachers. I think that's huge. Uh, I really do. I, I'm, I'm thinking back to, um, Again, to when, when you and I met in person, I had a chance to to hear you speak uh, in Las Vegas, and um, I love this. So, folks, if you don't know Katie, um, how do I say this the right way? Katie's not um, tall of stature, but <laughs> what Katie does is actually something I do, but for a different reason. Um, Katie has a tendency to jump up on the chair. And uh, in the they middle, they got to be what sturdy chairs, saying, but I will do it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but she's getting up on the chairs. So um, let's 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 create a new segment of the show here um, called "Get Up on the Chair." So give me a few things that will make you get up on the chair. And you know, like for me, I'll be honest with you: the thing I get on the chair. You've seen me do this. I get on the chair when I tell people you cannot be burned out if you've never been on fire. You have got to get back in touch with what you're on fire. So, Ooh. damn, I just Ooh. got fired up doing Ooh. that, didn't I? Yeah. That's a get on the chair moment. So give us a couple. Katie Kenner gets on the chair. Yeah. I mean, I was I was up on those chairs in Vegas. Yes. Uh, I, you know, I get excited about talking about the experience lessons, relevant lessons, engaging lesson plans. Like, how are we connected? We have to care more about who we are teaching than what we're teaching. Like sometimes a teacher needs to hear, how about you close your door and do what's best for the kids sitting in front of you. Stop listening to the noise. Stop freaking out about things that you cannot control. And that's me too. That's a, that's a reminder for me too. Like what's in my sphere of influence? And if it's not something I can influence, then I cannot have a panic attack over it. And so what can I control? And that is my classroom. That is making my classroom the safest place where kids can take big risks and they remember lessons that we did in eighth grade for years to come. I will have adult you know, students that you know have graduated and they're in their own jobs and they will be like, remember Edgar Allan Poe in October and and what you did and all I'm like yes that was so fun and I feel like you know when we're laughing we're learning when we are you know hands-on 
immersed in the learning that we, those are things that we remember. And I think it's really important. That's what gets me up on a chair. A hundred percent. That's outstanding. Uh, I love that so much. Uh, I, I think it's important that we don't lose track and don't lose sight of those things that we're just genuinely passionate about, right? Yeah. Because th there are so many things. I mean, you're, Katie, you're so right. There's so many things that are outside of our ability to to impact them. Those things that we just flat don't have any control over. And mm -hmm. you know, I, I know this. Uh, I mean, I, I talk about it everywhere I go. You talk about it where you go. That. You know, if we just focus on the things we can control and let go of the things that we can't, you know, that that's going to make us a whole lot better in the classroom. It just allows us to be a little bit better for our kids. Mm -hmm. uh, but how do you do it? It's easier said than done. Right. So so what's what's maybe a couple pieces of, of advice that you would share for whether it's a baby teacher or that veteran teacher who's just they're, they're that one who is a little bit burned out and we need to get them back in touch with, with what set them on fire. What, what's some advice yeah. for getting back to focusing on what like, like you can control? Yeah. I mean, I think number one, we got to get, we got to provide the training and the PD that the teachers need right now. Like they need to be able to go to a conference and get fired back up. They need to be able, you know, at their convocation or their one PD day that they get shouldn't necessarily be bloodborne pathogens, you know, like, like maybe we can, <laughs> we can bring in some things that are, are applicable and relevant and fun. Uh, and then too, I think you got to go in other people's classes. And I know that's a vulnerable place to be, to be like, Hey, come and watch me teach this really cool lesson. It may or may not go well, but I think the best principles foster that kind of relationship and environment where teachers feel empowered to go watch each other teach. So like as an instructional coach, I learned so much and I loved going in and watching, you know, a really cool math lesson where I was English and, or going and seeing history or, you know, I went outside with the eighth grade math class one day and they made bottle rockets and they were like, it's just fun. And I feel like we should feel more empowered to do that. And your best PD is the teacher down the hall, right? And so I know teachers are like, what on the time? But carve out five minutes. Five minutes? Ten minutes? I know that we have a 20-minute lunch and we've got a, you know, sandwich stuck in our throat while we're talking to a parent, while we're making copies, while we're on the toilet. Like, I mean, all the things. And it's hard. But I think that development piece has to always, always be front of mind, always. So one, that's the ultimate multi-purpose staff room that, that obviously <laughs> you, you had. Um, but, but two, I, I want to, I want to take not directly from that, but, but from something else that, that you were talking about and, and maybe just maybe go a little bit deeper. Um, you, you've thrown me completely with the sandwich in your throat on the toilet, talking to parents, <laughs> making, coffee to parent, making coffee. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you really, really did. I was able to recapture all of that. But uh, you, you but, visualized. No, I, I think. Yeah, oh, yeah. No kidding. I did. I did. And yeah. These poor like, teachers. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's 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 one way, I guess, to keep parents from calling, right? Um, but. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> um, now I don't even remember what I wanted to ask you. I'm, I'm sure sorry. It was I'm sorry. Extremely deep and important, and you know, probably the was the key to this podcast episode. <laughs> but we've derailed the whole thing. <laughs> That's okay. As I said at the top, when you meet just that one person that you, you just know your energies are going to match. That's, that's what happens. So, so uh, let, let's do this. Eventually that the idea will come back to me and, and, oh yeah, I do. There it is. See, I found it. Um, <gasps> I actually have had this conversation with, with several, with several schools that I'm working with right now that are at the point, or at least the administrators are hoping they're at the point where they can start opening up and the teachers will open up the doors to their peers coming into their classrooms, mm. whether that's a really well-structured administrators or like, okay, here's how we're going to do this to just a, Hey, we're going to give you the latitude. I'll come cover your class. So you can go watch somebody. And, and my question yes. for you, Katie, isn't necessarily around like the logistics of it, but rather 
from both being the instructional coach, being a classroom teacher. Um, you said something that made me think of when I was a rookie administrator, watching other people teach. I'm like, oh my God, I would be so much better as a teacher now because I yeah. see all this. So what would you, either as the instructional coach or, or, or in your role now, what would you be coaching teachers to look for? And, and how should they give feedback to their peers so that it's not like evaluative or or funky or weird. What what do you what do you got for us on the whole peer observation thing? Sure, uh, I like better just glows. Like this is what glows and grows, not grows, just glows. This is what I love about your classroom. I love that this happened, and I love that this happened. That's it. So people don't have to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm being judged. They're going to feel like that anyway. Sometimes, especially if you're you know, new and and it's a new subject and you're teaching a new school and all of that. And I think it's just like, here's this note. And I think you're amazing. And I think that you should go in and see how is the room set up? What, what does the objective look like? What, you know, how many of the kids are engaged? How many of them have their phone under their desk and are playing on TikTok? I mean, like, and just like be observant because sometimes if you're the the teacher in a room of 30 plus kids, it is hard. It's hard to see it all. And I think that you just continue to uplift. Like we all are creative. It's about finding what you are good at and making that applicable to kids and making sure that your classroom is a safe place to be. And that's what I would say, like, go down and see it. I mean, I have we have this big calendar in our workroom and you could put a post-it note on the day that you were doing something cool. You could come in, you could not come in. And I had a lesson that just completely bombed one day. And I had two teachers in there watching it happen. And I'm like, welcome to life. I mean, this is messy. This, this is human, yeah. messy work. Like you can have a kid blow up your class has nothing to do with you. And, and I'm like, okay, let's learn from it. Let's sit down and see, like, how could I have done that differently? How could I have, you know, handled that? I had a kid who came from extreme trauma. And the lesson that we were doing kind of broke his heart. It was a poetry lesson. And he, it just brought up a lot of stuff for him. And he went out of my class and slammed the door so hard, screaming the F word. And my entire class is looking at me like, <gasps> And I'm like, hey, you guys, sometimes that comes from like a lot of pain. Like, let's just keep going. I had to get on the phone like, hey, I've lost a kid. Like, <laughs> I need your help. <laughs> and, you know, and they and they helped me. And that's the thing, too. Like, let's be on the same team. Like, we need Coach Peppered. We need Miss Kinder. We need the teacher down the hall, the one upstairs. Like, we need every single one of us. And if you're not connecting with the kid the way that I am or vice versa, like we've got to use each other. That's what I would say to teachers. Let's go. I think that's outstanding. Um, I, I really, I mean, there were two great perspectives in there that, uh, you know, number one, just as far as the feedback, hey, I love this. I love this. I love this. But I, but I really appreciated how you talked about, you know, if I'm the one going in to observe, you know, really observe, like, what does the objective look like? You know, are they presenting that in the same manner that you are? You know, because you could always learn from, you can learn from every situation, right? I mean, you and I in the speaker space, every time we hear somebody else speak, we learn from them. Maybe yes. it's something great. Maybe it's something like, eh, I wouldn't do that, but that's okay, right? I mean, yeah. it's still an opportunity to learn. Um, I learned a different way to get on a chair or a different reason to get on a chair when I, when I heard you speak as, <laughs> as an example, right? So uh, definitely good perspective on that. So uh, I've, I've got to ask before, before we jump to, to my final question, um, right. we've got hallway leader, we've got uh, untold teacher truths. So we got books out there mm. with Katie Kinder's name on them. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the books. Uh, I mean, I'm curious. You and I have talked about this already a little bit, but um, just just that journey of yeah. uh, of doing the books. I know Untold Teacher Truths was first. Uh, mm -hmm. Hallway leader, uh, hallway leadership is new uh, or mm -hmm. fairly new. Um, again, talk a little bit about the books. Talk a little bit about sure. the book journey. 
Sure. So really it was, I was starting to speak, you know, 2019, 2018, 19, I would go to conferences. They'd ask me to come and people would get in line and they'd be like, you really should write all this down for teachers. And I'm like, you should write a book. And then I'm like, yeah, you should too. Ha ha. Like who has time for that? And then right. 2020 hit and I wrote it. Like I sat down and was like, okay, like some people ran marathons, Netflix marathon. Like I wrote that book and until teaching truth came out in 2021. And then from there, it just led me to all of these different opportunities, different paths, different places to speak and sell the book. And, you know, I love it when an audience I've never even talked to orders it for all of their new teachers. And then they're like messaging me like, you know, how do you do this? How do you do this? I love it. And then the hallway leadership. I just am surrounded by people who are amazing leaders and people like Darren Peppard, uh, and we put together this, this book that is, I mean, it's decently short, but it has all of these amazing authors in it and it's anecdotal. Like, how do you serve the people that you have been entrusted to your care? Like, that's such a big job. And how do you be a hallway leader? How are you being seen and visible and how are you making a difference? And it's not being in your office. That's for dang sure. And so yeah. we, uh, I have these, this collection of stories and advice for your principals and admin and teacher leaders too, and how we serve, how we serve the people. And that's how you lead. Yeah. There you go. I love that. That's, that's what it's all about. Um, and I know you and I were texting not long ago and you said something about, Ooh, we should write a book together and maybe we <gasps> Let's just, do it. we'll have to write a book together. I don't know. Yeah. No, we're going yeah. to so hang, <laughs> hang in there folks. We're going to Katie and I will, we'll write a book together at some point yes. in time. I actually have some ideas. Uh, we'll Me we'll too. talk about that after we, after okay. we turn off the record button folks, don't okay. worry. We will have that conversation. <laughs> so, um, let's, let's do this, Katie. Um, we could just, we could just go and go and go. Um, and some people probably would be like, yeah, keep going. And some people are probably like, okay, no, I've had enough of you too. Um, so to keep them from turning it <laughs> off and like actually have them finish the episode, let's do this. The last question I ask everybody here on the show, this is the Leaning Into Leadership podcast, Katie. So how are you leaning into leadership right now? Sure. I mean, I, I think I just said it too, it, like we're serving, like the schools that I serve when I go in there, like what needs to be done today? Do we need to go and help clean up the cafeteria? Then we're going to do that. And do we need to go into a baby teacher's room? Do we need to cover that class? Do we, like, what do the people need? And to be able to serve the people, we have to know their stories. So everybody's story is really important. And as a leader, you need to sit with people and get their stories because you cannot lead them if you don't know them. And so that's number one for me. Like, where are you coming from? Do you have a special needs child? Are you taking care of your ailing parents? Like, I, I need to know that to best lead you through some of the hard things we're going to have at a school. So that, and that is, in my opinion, the best way to lead others. Because Charles Williams, the Velvet Voice of Education, we, who's a buddy of ours, he says right. if if serving is beneath you, then leading is beyond you. Oh, and that's just a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. You can't top that right there. Uh, Charles yeah. Williams, our, our guy, our guy, love that. And absolutely the velvet <laughs> voice of education. Um, I got to get him on the podcast. I have not yet had Charles on, on the show, so we definitely need to, uh, to make that happen. And we will be with with Charles in New York. We will. Uh, I keep telling March. him, I'm so like, there you we could go. make millions of dollars yeah. just reading audiobooks or like being ASMR, like you should go to sleep now. And like people would be like, oh, man, I will yeah. pay you a million dollars. <laughs> Folks, if you don't know what I'm talking about, seriously, go follow him. It's at, uh, at underscore CW consulting on, on mm -hmm. Twitter and he's everywhere else, but just click on one of his videos and listen to his voice. He is the voice, the velvet voice of the education. The velvet no voice question about it. of education. Yes. There <laughs> I love you go. It. 
Charles, we've given you way more airtime than you probably deserve, my friend. <laughs> Actually, I'm kidding. You deserve so much airtime. We love you. Um, okay, so Katie, how how do we've just told them how to get a hold of Charles for some weird reason? But how do how do people get in touch with you? Because they're going to want to talk to you. They're going to want to hang out with you. Um, they're going to want to like get some teal glasses from you because I know they can oh, do that. Yeah. So uh, yeah. let's go. Well, and let's just talk for just a second. I want to give you props because. I've been leaning into these teal glasses. And when I saw you in Vegas, you're like, you know how much stuff you can do with those glasses? Like, you got to find some fake glasses to hand out. And I immediately was like, bet. Like, That's okay. Right, and so I that. did it. I did. And so I have started. It's, it's hilarious. Like, people want those fake glasses and they're going to sport them and oh, they yeah. hashtag. And it's so you're a marketing genius. You might be up there with Taylor Swift. Genius is a strong word, but yeah, I mean, (laughs) but if you don't, but, but here's the truth, right? Like, and and this is where that came from. Um, And and folks, this is true, uh, whether, whether you're, you know, wanting to speak or write a book or or you're in your classroom and you love being in your classroom, you're still building your brand. Every Mm -hmm. one of us, I mean, it used to be like your digital footprint that that's long since over with it's you're building your brand and, you know, having, having not met you yet, but communicated with you several times through, through social media and that kind of stuff to, to then see you in person and see the teal glasses. It's like, Oh my gosh, you have to lean into that. I mean, I think I told you like get business cards in the shape of your glasses and have them be teal and, and all that kind of stuff, because you know, that's road to awesome. I mean, everything we do is road to awesome. Um, and it came from a genuine, authentic place, just like your teal glasses do. And that yeah. that's, I think that's like the big key, right? With, with building your brand, with marketing is it's got to come from a genuine place. If you try to create something because you saw somebody else do something kind of like that, then no, it's going to fall flat. Be real with it. And that your glasses, I mean, that's real. Yeah. It's so fun. Um, okay. I, I digress. I'm sorry. You can find me katiekinder.com. Uh, Twitter slash X at Katie Kinder one Instagram at until teaching truth. And then I'm Googleable. Come Google me and uh, come and slide into my DMs and let's talk. I love it. And there you have it. All right. Hey, this is so much fun. Katie, thanks for joining me here on the leaning into leadership podcast. Yeah. So full disclosure, folks, when I told Katie, she should lean in to the teal glasses thing. I had no idea how far she was going to take it. And she's honestly done a brilliant job of making that her brand and making that her mark, you know, because again, like I said, during the the recording, uh, it comes from a place that's genuine and it comes from a place that's authentic. So if you're at a conference, if you're at an event and Katie Kinder is a part of it, make sure you have the opportunity to connect with her, her energy, her enthusiasm, her just genuine genuine love of life and love of education man she's somebody you got to be connected with so make sure you take the opportunity when when you have it to get in touch with katie and now it's time for a pep talk so we'll be hosting for thanksgiving this year and as i sit here recording earlier today my wife and i went and did the we're hosting for thanksgiving this year shopping. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, you drive a whole lot of money, you have more stuff than you have room in your house to keep. So you really hope everything's going to get eaten. And it took a while. Let's just say it took a while. And honestly, I think it's something that I absolutely just loved about my day. I got to spend that time with my wife. And yeah, we were running around the stores and that kind of stuff, but we also stopped and grabbed a coffee. You know, we just had some wonderful time together. Now, why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this for a reason. This morning on my walk, I was listening to one of my favorite podcasts. Uh, My buddy Brian Martin, who does the Teaching Champions podcast, had Megan Lawson on as a guest. And one of the things that Megan was talking about was a friend of hers, who's actually a mutual friend, Livia Chan, had sent her a text at one point in time and said, tell me something you loved about your day. Megan went on to tell this story and talked about how she had decided to start paying it forward and started doing the same thing, asking other people to do that. Well, in essence, I feel like Megan was asking me, hey, what'd you love about your day? 
I'll tell you again, what I loved about my day was spending time with my wife. So I want to challenge you. What did you love about your day? Those of you who have my cell phone number, just shoot me a text. Tell me what you love about your day. If you don't have my cell phone number, shoot me an email. It's darren at roadtoawesome.net. Or hit the contact form on the website at roadtoawesome.net. Or hit me on social media. You know, slide something in my DM. I want to know what did you love about your day on the day that you're listening to this podcast. You know, when we start looking for the positives, folks, we find them. If you've ever heard me speak, you know, I talk about red cars. And if you count the number of red cars when you're out driving around, you find a lot of red cars because you're looking for them. It's the same thing about finding the positives in your day. When you're looking for them, you'll find them. So, challenge extended. Reach out. Let me know. What did you love about your day? Also, I'm going to reach out to Megan and see if we can get her here on the podcast so we can talk about that a little bit more. That's what I've got for you today, folks. I hope you loved the episode. Um, I hope you hit the subscribe button. I would love to hear your feedback. So please, please, please give us that, that review. Hit the five-star button if you feel like we're five-star worthy and let us know what you think about the Leading Into Leadership podcast. Have a road to awesome week. Thank you for listening to the Leaning Into Leadership podcast brought to you by Road to Awesome. Don't forget, click subscribe, give a review, and share this with somebody who might also enjoy leaning into leadership.